Hey everybody and welcome to another Expanded Guide. Today, Travis and I are going to be talking about Parallel Daisy. Um, this is not our first Parallel Investigator we've done, but if you don't know what a Parallel Investigator is, uh, they are um, print and play investigators that you can find on the Fantasy Flight Games website. Basically a reimagining of an already existing character. Currently there are five, one for each core set. Investigator, Daisy Walker. Uh, she has one brain, five book, two fist, two foot, she soaks for 5 uh, damage, 7 horror. You get her ability is you get plus 1 brain and plus 1 sanity for each toe mass that you control. And as a lightning bolt, one at a time, resolve an action ability on each toe mass that you control, ignoring their action cost, limit once per game. Mm -hmm. um, Elder Sign effect is plus 1, you may return a toe mass from your discard pile to your hand. It's actually pretty sweet. Yeah, that is a nice, uh, uh, that's a good, good Elder Sign to have. Yeah. Uh, deck building size is 30. Deck building options are Tome 0 to 5, Seeker level 0 to 3, Neutral 0 to 5, up to 5 other level 0 Guardian and or Mystic cards. Um, yeah. And the deck building restriction requirements are basically just the same. She does have an advanced version of her, um, of the tote bag in the Necronomicon, mm -hmm. but I believe you could use the basic ones still. Uh, but like, I also don't remember yeah. exactly how those work. But I do know that if you use one advanced, mm -hmm. you have to use the other. I think you get yeah. it. Yeah. When I play Parallel Guys, I just put the advanced ones. Yes, yeah, ditto. <laughs> ditto. Yeah. Uh, the the, the, the toe bags are pretty good. Uh, the advanced one is, it commits for like a buttload of symbols. Um, but you're probably going to want it in play, otherwise your brain is bad. <laughs> yeah. 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 You have two additional hand slots, which can only be used to hold tome assets. And when you play a tome asset during your turn, exhaust Daisy's tote bag, that asset gains fast. That is a nice ability. It kind of makes up for the fact that she loses her printed ability from the core set, which is like a free tome action. So yeah. like, this is like the same, but you just need to find your tote bag to play it. I actually might feel a bit better about that. Quite a bit better about Parallel Daisy if the tote bag was like permanent. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, the Necronomicon, the advanced version, is uh, it's very similar to that one. Uh, you have to move horror onto it, and then instead of treating an Elder Sign as an auto fail, you treat it as a cultist, a tablet, and a squid. That can be very bad. Okay. That's <laughs> yeah. basically an auto fail numbers wise. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Auto fail number wise, but with <clears throat> negative effects. Most of the time. Yeah, but sometimes it's better because you can just sometimes squeak through a pass or something like that. Yeah, yeah, If your number is high enough. Yeah. Or if you have an auto-succeed thing. Yes, right? yeah. Um, so and another thing is, too, is that, like, uh, the original um, Daisy Elder Sign is, like, it's fine. You get a draw a card. Or, like, you draw a card for each tome you control, yeah. right? Like, that's nice. But this one has a really good, like, recursion is just a nice effect. So not only is you're going to want to clear it out because your Elder Sign is pretty... Pretty nice. Yeah, it's for good to have. Yeah. We always talk about how York and Silas's Elder Signs are really good, and this is similar to those. Yes, yeah. Uh, so, obviously, Daisy Walker Parallel has a pretty simple game plan, which is get Tome Assets out. That's step one. Then your brain is in garbage. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, in a perfect world, you're going to want to get four Tome Assets out with your Tozy's Tote Bag. Yeah. You can get more. There's going to be some slotless tomes that we're going to be showcasing as we get going <laughs> through this. Uh, and all of those help making you, like, uh, obviously if you get four, you have five brain and five book. She just requires a lot of work to get there. Yeah, she's good once she's set up, but it's tough to get to this uh, point and also maintain it. Yes, yeah. So the strengths, lots of sanity, like a lot of sanity, uh, yeah. and potentially high... <laughs> <laughs> and potentially a high brain score. The weakness is, is a weak card pool. The tomes, like tomes zero to five, is not that exciting. When we were first talking about Daisy back in the day, we were like, she's going to get better with tomes. And that she's gotten a lot better as more tomes have come out. She's yeah. always been good. But this one, like, you really want tomes, like, in a collection. Yeah, her card pool has improved uh, a fair bit with Edge of the Earth coming mm -hmm. out. I originally made this guide before then. But, uh, like, Astronomical Atlas in combination with being able to play Seeker Skills 0-3 to three is pretty nice. Yep. It's not something a lot of other investigators can do. Yep, yep. Um, but you are still basically just playing Tomes, which is something that Daisy regular can do. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so. 
Yeah, it's 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 one of those things. I do feel like of all the parallel investigators, Daisy is the least exciting of them because she's not like you look at like how Daisy Walker parallel Daisy compared to like parallel Wendy, and it's like a whole new character. Yeah, yeah. no, like I, they definitely didn't. This was like a test run for them. Like I said, if the tote bag was permanent, I could see it being a lot more enticing. Because um, yeah. as it stands, you kind of like need to. Do your tome set, but also, like, you need to, there's the extra step of having to find and play the tote bag to, like, yes. actually get to real stats. Yeah. Whereas if it was permanent, like, uh, and honestly, I don't see why it shouldn't be if, um, Precious Memento or whatever. Uh, the, Wendy's yeah. Thing. The conch shell. Yeah. Yeah. That thing. That thing. Uh. Tidal Memento, that's what it's yeah, called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tidal yeah. Memento. If that's permanent, like, yeah. why can't this be? <laughs> yeah, and even if, like, you look at it this, like, you could say, like, her ability is that she gets plus one brain and plus one sanity. But, like, if you can compare that to Diana, mm -hmm. she has the same kind of thing, but she also has more. And yes, you have more, but as we go back to the next weaknesses, you only get one use of your ability. I love stat... Stats. I love making my number big. But when it's the only thing you do, it's not that exciting. It is also a little bit tough that she boosts her brain and you only get Mystic Cards level zero, so you don't get a ton of use out of it. Most yeah. homes don't care about your brain. Yeah, it's like you're like, you bail, build a good defense and you're mm -hmm. like, now I'm unstoppable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But we're, I am still excited to talk about Daisy because, uh, as Travis said, there's some cool stuff in Edge of the Earth when we get there. And mm -hmm. in the meantime, we're going to talk about staples from the core set. Yeah, not just have, like, a small niche. Yeah, yeah. And we have, uh, we're definitely not, like, experts on Daisy, um, oh. Parallel Daisy. So uh, if there's someone watching who's played Daisy, uh, Dar Parallel Daisy, let us know in the comments anything, any other tips that you might have because uh, we're going to kind of lean on you for this one. But... <laughs> We're still going to go in and start talking about the core set. So, Travis, why don't you take these ones? Yeah. First up, we got our old book of lore, which, like our normal Daisy, is, like, pretty... I don't know, it's actually even more important to this version of Daisy, considering how integral the tote bag is to your game plan. Yeah. It's a to tome to fill up your, um, your sanity and your brain buff. And then it also has an action ability to get, like, real use of your lightning bolt. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, very important card, I think. For parallel Daisy. Also, one thing that we should say: mm -hmm. uh, don't do your your lightning bolt ability when you have like one tome in play. You're gonna want to like at least get most of the time. Yeah, you're gonna want to at least get like something out of it. Yeah, we got shriveling here. Um, once you get your tomes full, you're gonna have five brain, which is a pretty reasonable place to be for casting spells. And mm -hmm. shriveling is a way to kill things. Yeah. Um, something you can't do with a ton of tomes. Um, you know, like, there's a couple of them that help with that, but... Mm -hmm. We got Warrior Protection, level 0, just a good level 0 purple card to fill in those 5 slots. We got our Flashlight, nice solid uh, clue getting item, pairs well with our 5 book. Emergency Cash, because is good and you need to have money to play, play your, your books. books. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty important. Mm -hmm. um, and while there are some stronger options in Seeker in general, uh, this one's just it's solid. It's yeah. good. Yeah. We got Guts, Perception, Unexpected Courage, I like the Emergency Cash. These are all in our steeple video for neutral. They just give you more stats, man. Yeah, more stats, and two they of them replace themselves, yeah. Yeah, the Perception, the Guts card draw is particularly nice to help dig for your tomes. tote bag. Yeah, and your yeah. tomes. And your tote bag, yeah. Uh, keeping us going here, we have Magnifying Glass. Uh, the gives you more book. We talk about this, in, well, more book when investigating, because I know someone's going to say something in the comments. Um, but it's well, part of our clue video. For. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we have Dr. Milan, who is a staple. He gives you more book all the time, and he also gives you money, which, as Travis said, is important because you're yeah, going to have to play pretty, a lot of tomes. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, Deduction also in our staple seeker video. It's just more clue, and more clue is good. Uh, we have Research Librarian. This guy grabs a tome. Two of them. Yeah. Play two. <laughs> just, just it's play pretty two. much like a... If there was a symbol for like... If it was like Daisy Walker's face to show you have to play this in the deck. Yeah. This would have two Daisy Walker faces on it. <laughs> uh, Mind Over Matter. Uh, basically use your book for punching or... Um, foot. Foot. Use five and stuff too. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Yeah. I've been uh, re-watching our old gameplay um, from when we first played Dunwich oh, for God. the patrons and, and commenting on it. Oh, God. Uh, and it's... Uh, 
it, Mind Over Matter does work when you have a small collection. Oh, it does a no, lot it's of like work. It's a solid yeah. card. Yeah, it is. So it's, it's one of them like we don't play as often anymore, but like it's, it's, yeah, it's good. Options, but yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's a good card. It is. Yeah. Encyclopedia. This is an experienced tome. Once again, tome is the word we're looking for. If we see that, it has a potential place in her parallel daisy. Gives plus two to a skill until the end of the phase. Um, this one uh, is potentially good like if you need to bump over a book uh, like uh bump over a test that you're going to be doing or to give to someone else if you don't if you have downtime which as this as the clue getter you're probably going to have less downtime than others but especially if you're playing like three players you could definitely find the time for it book of shadows another tome you have one additional arcane slot you can exhaust it to add one charge to a spell asset you control this is what I was talking about, like, when you want to, like, start getting small value, like, more value than just one for your Lightning Bolt ability. Like, doing the Old Book of Lore, Encyclopedia, and Book of Shadows, just what these three examples have, all action lists, like, for one action, like, for a Lightning Bolt, that's when you start getting the value in your ability. Then we have Upgrading Magnifying Glass, which is just cheaper, and you can return it to your hand if you're doing uh, a big hand build, or if you want to play, for example, a tome that you may need to play to make your... Uh, wow. Yeah, and this is actually something that, like, the hand slot's going to be more contested with Parallel Daisy because you're going to be wanting to play it's your very tomes. competitive, yes. Yeah. All right, Travis Dunwich. You got Delve Too Deep. This is an important card, kind of, because more experience means you can get into some of the higher value tomes for Daisy, mm -hmm. which is, like, really the reason to play her. Mm -hmm. Uh, we got Painkillers, which let you take a horror to heal damage. You only have five hearts ever, but you could <laughs> have up to eleven brains, yeah. so you can turn some of that uh, some of that sanity into health. Yeah, that's yeah. a good that's a good exchange. Yeah, yeah. We got Moonlight Ritual here. This one's here. Uh, it doesn't really make sense what we've seen so far, but there are a couple of <laughs> yes. tomes that care a lot about that you could like stack Doom onto. It's one of the few ways that Daisy has to get them off. Mm -hmm. And honestly, this card might. Should have probably been bundled with them, but whatever. <laughs> I, actually, when I was making it too, I was like, Moonlight Ritual. And I forgot about <laughs> the, like, the Vermis, and I was like, what? Oh, yeah, the book yeah. that cares about it. There's two of them. Yeah, yeah. the There's other like one, the, the uh, Abyssal too. Tome. Yeah. yeah. The fish book, that's how I remember it too. <laughs> it's fish in the background. Yeah. Right? It's from Innsmouth. Anyway, we got Shortcut, just a really good yellow card. I've got a plan. This is one of your app options for using your book in place of one of your garbage stats. Um, Inquiring Mind is really nice to uh, get over a high shroud location or protect your brain before you get a nice amount of, of tomes in play. Mm -hmm. Pathfinder and level 2 deduction. Both in the Seeker Staples video, Pathfinder's many free moves and deduction is even more clues. Even more clues. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, I guess one thing we haven't really talked about is that Daisy just has five book. Like, that's a good number. Like, that's just mm -hmm. a good number for book. And you roll around with your book, be, yeah. book v shroud. Yeah, books. <laughs> uh... Oh, I want to take these ones finish yeah, off sure. Uh Higher education is pretty good. Um, it's exceptionally good for Daisy because your tomes cost infinite money, so there's no way you're going to be able to play them all. You're going to have a handful <laughs> of cards. That's so <laughs> You'll funny. You'll have five cards in hand, yeah. not by choice. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we got Charisma and Relic Hunter in case you want more things in play. Yeah, yeah. Relic way. Hunter is pretty nice, I, I think, yes. for Daisy. She's got some access to some solid yellow accessories in particular. Um... The charisma. I mean, you can also use it to play like multiple holy rosaries in case you. Yeah. Do you need more brain? And sanity. Yeah, yeah, more brain and sanity. <laughs> Go to what yeah, freaking yeah. a billion? Yeah. yeah the charisma is actually nice though. They have like Doctor Milan, and then uh, also like. You can't even play Abigail. You can't. I mean, I went through. I went back. I was like, is Abigail in this? I was like, no, she has level zero to three. Uh, and Abigail's four. Uh, Witten. Witten? Yeah, Witten. Witten. yeah, there you go. I mean, honestly, also too, like if you play Doctor Milan, like with para with with regular Daisy, your research librarian, you get one off the the beginning, you get the tome you're playing with, and you're like, I'm good. With this one, you always could potentially want more tomes. So like you, if even if you're just like have a Doctor Milan and then you play a research librarian mm -hmm. and grab a tome, that's still going to be value for you in the future. Yep. All right, on to Carcosa. Which has David Renfield. Uh, he gives you money. He gives you brain. <laughs> These are all things that are good. And he also gives you soak when you fail a rotting remains because you have two brain. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that is what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And it's another card that interacts with Moonlight Ritual. Good job, man. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have St. Hubert's Key, which is actually probably pretty great in Parallel Daisy because you have so much sanity. So that minus mm -hmm. two, you're like, I'm 
that's never going to happen. Maybe and around it, 66. Yeah. And it bumps up your brain. It bumps up your book. The book one is, like, really nice here. Because, like, really the brain, like as Travis said, you get Mystic 0 to 5. And you can run, like, f like... You get Mystic 0. 0? You get 5 Mystic. You get mystic. 5 Mystic 0, yeah. So, like, uh -huh. you, you don't get the good spells. Like, you don't get, like, good shriveling. You get, like, regular shriveling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One thing I do want to know is it says you get level 0 Guardian or Mystic. But most of the level 0 Guardian stuff is just really... We haven't really featured it because it's really just not applicable. Yeah, because like, yeah. So like, you want your punch to be better. You want to play beat cop. You're like, no. Yeah, no, I'm good. You want to play guard dog, and it's like this takes heart damage. But I'd really rather just have Doctor Malan or something. Yes, yeah, yeah. You know, they're just not great options for. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, seeing Hebrew Kiva. The only tough part about this one is the four resources. To play. Yes, because once again, it's all your lot. books are very competitive. Yeah. yeah. Just you, what you gotta do with Parallel Daisy is you get make sure someone is running Faustian Bargain and just talk the money out of them. Okay. Yeah. Just, I need some more. Give me some more. So give me some more from the deal. Yeah, bargain. Be like, if you give me the money to play it, I'll use this old book of lore on you for the next two turns. Yeah, and then don't because you're like, I have the. I need to investigate. I, I have need the clues. money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need clues. We, need, we we gotta get going on the objective, guys. <laughs> uh, if I was regular Daisy, I would use them on you, no problem. But a parallel Daisy, no, I gotta. I gotta <laughs> I've <clues. kept> both of <laughs> us. Uh, no stone unturned can help you find most importantly your tote bag. Yeah. 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 It's uh, just a nice card. Yeah, yeah. And like worst case as well, this is just a wild when you don't have the money or you already have everything you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Logical reasoning uh, commits for two brain, so it's a guts, but it also can heal horror or discard a terror card from your threat area, which is actually like somewhat noticeable because like there's a chance that you too, Daisy Walker, can get frozen in fear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have Eureka, which is a, a, I love this skill. Uh, it's especially good in Daisy because it once again help, can help you find your uh, tote bag, but also just like being able to find cards is really good on the test that you're probably going to pass mm -hmm. because it's a book test. Yeah. Forewarned, it's a ward of protection. You can cancel the revelation effect on a treachery card. Uh, you just got to place one of your clues in your location, which is probably pretty easy for you to do. This is a good choice if uh, you're scared of the encounter deck, which you might be. You might be, because, you know... Yeah, there's some cards that'll get you good, like uh, Grasping Hands will... Grasping Hands, yeah. Kill you. Um, yeah, Grasping Hands will kill you. I mean, even <laughs> things that... Even, like, a poorly timed, like, um, uh, Crypt Chill can really uh, throw yeah. you back. Yeah. yeah. And then we have Upgraded Shortcut. It's a bit more campaign-dependent, but still just a nice, strong option, especially if you have campaign knowledge and people are going to be moving from a central location a bunch. Shortcut's really nice for mm -hmm. that. All right, Travis... Yeah, Miss Avrilla here. This is our uh, level zero purple spell that lets us evade. Um, you'll notice that there wasn't a level zero right of seeking that we talked about, and that's because you can already investigate yes. like a normal person. Yeah. Uh, but fighting and evading are much more difficult for Daisy, so here you go. Except we got Backpack, which you should also probably play two of. Daisy had two Daisy faces on that card. Yeah. And the upgrade one gets four daisy faces. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it finds your tomes, finds your tote bag, finds whatever else garbage you have in your deck. Like, yeah. it's really good for yeah. her. Um, yeah, scene of the crime, which is our first level zero blue card. Wow. Um, your job is to get clues, and this lets you get clues without making a test, as long as there's an enemy at your location, or just clue if there isn't. Mm -hmm. um, it's like just a solid card to have. Sometimes, if you're spending all your money on tomes, you're not going to be able to invest as much into growing your book stat to get over some of those high shroud locations, and this mm -hmm. can help you kind of cheese your way through them. Yep. Next up, we have another blue card, Take the Initiative. Uh, this is like Inquiring Mind, but different for Daisy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got Enraptured. Uh, Daisy makes pretty solid use of Enraptured. I believe there's some tomes that use charges. Uh, or secrets. Yeah, lots of them use secrets, right? Um... Uh, this card just puts char just puts the thing on the gate box. Man. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It just gives you plus one book, and then you probably succeed your book test because you got at least six now, and mm -hmm. you get to another use of one of your high value tomes or something like that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we got truth from fiction, which serves a similar purpose: more secrets on your books. And finally, we got one of the the power books. <laughs> Yeah. Power. Yeah, Noptic Manuscripts. This one is when investigate your location would perform a skill test during a revolution. Excuse me, revelation effect. You can spend a secret to uh, not have them reveal chaos tokens, so they just get to compare their number to it. Good deal. Um, and as an action, you can spend a secret to choose to investigate your location, and they do not reveal chaos tokens for the next skill test. They perform this round. Mm -hmm. 
Um, both really strong options. Great tome to reload with Enraptured and Truth from Fiction. Yep. Great tome to get your deck with uh, Research Librarian. Mm -hmm. Curve Daisy. Does cost five. So if you win this plan, you mm -hmm. definitely want economy. Yeah. yeah. It is more efficient to uh, spend your experience on things like upgrade truth from fiction to reload it than it is to spend it on like more copies of it. Correct. Yeah. 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 And we got level three feed the mind. It's not a tome. No, it's not a tome. It's a, it's a spell. And it lets you draw cards after making book tests. You're good at making book tests, so. They yeah. really they really should have had different art for feed the mind. For, or made it just made it a tome, even though it's a spell. Because if, if there's a book on it... It should be a tome, yeah. I love how you compare it next to the Nicotic Manuscripts, and it's just a broken tablet. <laughs> well, I mean, like... The, I know you're, like, the idea is that you're, like, getting this, like, like, like knowledge. The information. But yeah. they could have, yeah, they could have had a better art for that. Yeah. Oh, Circle and Already, we're just blazing. All right, Circle Undone, we got Scroll of Secrets. This is a, um, honestly, like... I think this card is like probably going to be really good with Parallel Daisy, uh, mm -hmm. especially specifically the upgraded version, which we're going to get to. Um, so like, I'm going to just like talk about it briefly, but just put it in your deck, get the upgraded version. It's going to be a great time. It costs one. Mm -hmm. It's a tome. And when you play Tabooed, it's a lightning bolt, uh, which ironically now doesn't work with Daisy's ability. Yeah. But it's also a lightning bolt, so you can just like do yeah, it. Yeah, Squirrel Secrets is like one of the few Taboo cards that I would tell new players is yeah, the just, way it is because printed it's just garbage yes yeah it really is but uh with the lightning bolt is like solid <laughs> uh we have the called lexicon this is a great option as well for daisy uh it's only a one-up which is not a problem because you have your research librarians yeah the guy he does some heavy lifting there <laughs> yes yeah uh so and then adds blood rights which you're gonna drop to two cards discard up to two cards uh, for each card discarded, you may either gain a resource or spend a resource to deal one damage to an enemy at your location. You're probably realistically going to be using this a lot to gain resources, but that's okay. Um, you can also just use it to kill things. <laughs> but you can also just use it to kill things, right? It's just a really good option uh, for um, Daisy. And you get three copies of the Blood Rite, one in your hand, two into your deck, which is mm -hmm. makes also all your like stuff that you can find in your draw, you're going to get them. It's just a great, great combination. Great card. Uh, Deny Existence. Uh, this should have a staple signal a symbol on it that I forgot. It's just like a really good defensive spell. It is. Play it. Yeah. We got Alice Luxley, another uh, Guardian card, and probably realistically this is the reason why they gave her Guardian zero, because... No, I think we talked about when she first came out is that she has a deck bow in the way she is, so that way you can play her scenario with just the core set. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that is fair. Yeah, because you uh, can't actually build a deck with her without the five Guardian and Mystic cards, I believe. Spicy. Yeah. That is, yeah. Um, but Alice Luxley is still really good, and uh, you get plus one book, mm -hmm. and you can also kill things. So, like, when I was talking about, like, the third player flex parallel daisy, you could do it with this Alice Luxley and just, like, poke and kill things. Yeah. 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 Because it's, like, really easy for you to get clues. Mm -hmm. It's really easy. Hallowed Mirror, uh, this is like the Occult Lexicon where you get to add three copies of a card into your deck, one of them into your hand, two get shuffled in. Uh, it's one co limit one per deck, but they're Soothing Melodies, which are going to heal damage or horror from among investigators and or ally assets your location and draw a card. This is pretty nice for healing mm -hmm. you because you have five meat on you, and that meat will get chipped away yep. over time. I actually really, really like this card in, in Parallel Daisy because you only get five Guardian Mystic cards, and that means that if you don't play one with a limit of one, you have to decide which of your cards you're going to yeah, play that's one true. copy it, it does but the thing. you don't have to think. Yeah. And also, like, the necklace isn't, like, super competitive. Like, <laughs> no. No. There is the, the, uh, the um, as we said, Relic Hunter can solve this problem, but, like, Hallowed Mirror, I think, is just a really good accessory slot. Yeah. We have Curiosity. Uh, it gives you brain and book and more if you have more cards in hand. Which you, as Travis said, you're going to. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Uh, we have Crack the Case. Uh, this also should have a stable set. I, I've just... You really just stopped doing it, huh? For, for Circle of <laughs> I was just like, we don't, none of these are staples. Uh, this gives you re uh, resources when uh, the last crew clue is discovered from a location. Equal to that location's shroud. You can split it up, but you're probably not going to because you want that delicious money. And this is something that you can do yourself to get this money you as really well. Because you have five money. Book. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Rook, he can help you find cards at the cost of a weakness, um, which is uh, not really a cost. It sometimes can be really good to find what you need. And one thing we didn't mention earlier, earlier is that the Necronomicon is a tome, which means... Plus one brain and book. Yeah. 
Yeah, plus one brain, and then you get some more sanity. Like, it's just like, it's a good deal. Sometimes it can be, like, the perfect time to get mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah, because it takes because it has the asset subtype. It counts as a card you control, right? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah it doesn't just sit in your throat area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, we, uh, we have Esoteric Atlas. It's a tome. Spend four secrets. And it has four secrets. You can spend a secret to get exhausted to choose a real location that is exactly two connections away. Mm -hmm. Move to that location. It's a tome. And it can provide movement. Yeah, it's also got like a pretty good effect too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, now we're on the scroll of secrets. We have the the secret version and the mystic and version. The seal version and the glowy version. Yes, yeah. Uh, it is glowing on the side. Look yeah, it's that. magic. Yeah, it, is, it is magic. That's mystics. Yeah. They're magical. Uh, so we're going to look at these and treat them as if they were uh, lightning bolts because they should be. Uh, so the scroll of secrets is you can exhaust it uh, on the secret one. Spend a secret. Look at the bottom three cards of any investigator's deck or the encounter deck. You may discard one of those cards. You may add one of those cards to its owner's hand, or place the rest of those cards either on the top or the bottom of their deck in any order. That's really good for one, one resource. Yeah. Because it also is a tome. So then you can like look at the bottom of your deck. You can start getting what you need. You can discard your weaknesses. Like, it's, it's, like, one of the few ways that you can just, like, have a pretty good shot of getting rid of your weaknesses from even appearing. I should play this card more often. That's pretty sick. It's, yeah, it's really good. That's it's pretty really good. good. <laughs> yeah. Especially for one freaking resource. Yeah. Then we have the Mystic one, which, honestly, I don't know what, what it does, so I'm going to read. Spend a secret, look at the top of the bottom card of any investigator's deck or the encounter deck. Then either discard that card, add it to his hand, place it on the bottom of its deck, or place it on top of the deck. So you can look at the top. Of the encounter deck. That's probably what, like, because you can look at the top of the encounter deck. Not the bottom of the encounter deck. So it's... You can look at the top or the bottom. Yeah, but the top is what makes it uh, different from the other one. And so that's kind of yeah. like, it's still fine. And it still only costs one. But like that uh, other, like... It also has four uses you. instead of three. Yeah, yeah. So you see less cards. But you can also look at the top mm -hmm. of the encounter deck and your deck. That can be useful in, like, later scenarios to, sh like... Get rid of a kill a mindless dancer. Yeah, to like shuffle away things like mindless dancer or yeah. ancient evils or yep. yeah. coin hand. Yep. Yeah, no, definitely. And like this is circle undone. So those are all things we've like talked about that appear in be worried about. <laughs> one scenario at the end. Yeah. Uh, we have the Vermis Mysterious. This is a tome that has doom on it. So this is with the Moonlight Ritual. We The Chekhov's gun has finally been shot. Uh, and uh, spell or inside events from your discard pile. You can reduce its resource cost by one, and after it resolves, you remove it from the game. That's the resource reduction is good. Yeah. Uh, and also, like, just the card is like, it's it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, it's, it's a nice little build around. Yeah. Something Mystic doesn't get too often, and also Parallel Daisy doesn't get too much. Mm -hmm. of, so. Uh, and then we have Death Thirteen, which is a tarot card that gives you more book. All right, Travis, where are we on to next? We are dream eaters. We got our dream diary here. This is a tome. Look at that. And uh, so this one is you get to search your bond cards for the essence. The dream is an action. And as a lightning bolt after you, or I mean as a reaction, after you succeed by three or more during a skill test in which essence the dream is committed, you get to write your campaign log. You interpreted the dreams, which mm -hmm. gives you the option to upgrade the dream diary, which I guess we're going to talk about in the next slide because they're not here. Mm -hmm. um, that's super easy to do with your five book. Yeah, just pick, like, one of those garbage two shroud locations, you know, like I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, we got Scroll of Prophecies, um, another tome. Four secrets as an action. You can spend a secret to choose an investigator at your location to have them draw three cards, then discard a card. doesn't have to be one of the ones they drew. It's a really nice way for Daisy to dig for her important cards or to help your teammates get to their important cards. Yeah. Got read the signs to cost events in their Mystic Staples video gets clues. It's like impossible to fail when you have your five brain, the the engines running. Um, so we got Tetsuo Mori also in our staple videos. This man dies and finds you a book. <laughs> yeah, or I your got you bag. this. Yeah. yeah, it's your book bag, Daisy. <laughs> yeah, no, he's pretty sweet actually. Yeah. Next up, we got Stang Revelation, which I think is a great card for Parallel Daisy. You have so many cards you're going to be searching your deck with. Research Librarian, Old Book of Lore, No Stone Unturned, Eureka. Backpack, Tetsuo Mori, Eureka. Yeah, it's just free resources. Practice makes perfect. Or Secrets, yeah. Practice <laughs> makes perfect is also a pretty good option for that. Um, in the Seekers, like, I've talked about this card so much, I don't even really know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you, you get more deduction. 
We got our other world codex here. This one's like a little bit weird. I've actually played this card a couple times and it's been okay. Um, you get to exhaust it and search the top nine cards in the encounter deck for a non-elite card. And then you get to discard a copy of the card that you revealed from play. Mm -hmm. Which can be like handy in some scenarios. It's really good in the circle and done, I think. Yep. And also a little bit in Dream Eaters because they have like some treachery to just hang around. Yep. Um, you can use it to kill non elite enemies, things like mindless dancers. That'd yeah, be pretty sweet. This is one that does ultimately also get better when you can use your big activation because sometimes it feels a bit bad to spend an action on this than miss. And by sometimes, mm -hmm. I mean like that feels really bad. But I when did it's just that last yeah. weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just someone. It's something that just happens. It's it's a bit nicer. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Sip Grade Dream Diaries. Uh, these ones make your essence the dream commit for four symbols instead of two uh, under certain circumstances. Uh, those are having eight cards in your hand, uh, having being in a location with four shroud, or being engaged with an enemy, I think. Yep. Yeah, engaged with an enemy. Um, all of which are like pretty solid options to have. I wouldn't feel too bad about picking any of them. Generally, I prefer the four shroud one. Yep. But... And I mean, like, worst case in it as well, it's just a free unexpected courage each turn. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, yeah, that's the other important part is you just get the essence to dream every turn for free. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. Um, the old book of lore, we have an upgraded version of it. The difference here is, besides the three experiences, it costs one less resource. It comes with two secrets, and you, it has the, the normal ability, but also has the option that uh, you can spend one of the secrets to have one of the, the card that the player picks uh, be played immediately, reducing the resource cost by two. Which That's is, really nice. It is really nice, yeah. 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 Lastly, we got our surprising find here. This is uh, another one of the research cards, which we talked about is pretty easy for Daisy to abuse, get use out of. Um, this one is you just get to commit your next skill test, and if you succeed, you draw a card. Yeah. Um, the Old Book of Lore upgraded one I think is particularly great in Parallel Daisy because like in regular Daisy, like you're fine pretty much with basic Old Book of Lore. You, that can last you the whole campaign. Yeah, you're just cruising. This one I think it's a very notable upgrade because it allows you to play things for cheaper, mm -hmm. uh, which is really good. Really good. Alright, Innsmouth Conspiracy. I think Daisy is one of the first to have two slides for Innsmouth Conspiracy. Huh. Wow. Wow. So we have the Cryptic Grimoire. This is a tome that you can translate by having 10 curse tokens in the Chaos Bag. And when you do, you replace five of them with Bless tokens. Let me just tell you, it's pretty crazy <laughs> having 10 curse tokens in the bag. And hopefully the person you're playing with upgrades it eventually, so there is a reason for translating Look, if we got more experience, I would upgrade it. I want to play with the upgraded ones, Justin. Uh, so we have the, the upgraded one is... Um, after you resolve one or more curse tokens during a skill test, you can place that many secrets on Cryptic Grimoire. Uh, they both have that text. Um, the text of the Elder Herald is when you play an inside event during your turn, you can spend two secrets. That event gains fast, reduces cost by one. And then the uh, other one is when you draw the top card of the encounter deck, spend five secrets, draw a card from your deck instead. That that you're gonna do that one, aren't you? And you're just gonna yeah, you're just, you're gonna just punishing me, aren't you? <laughs> I just I have twos, man. <laughs> it's true, you do, yeah, you do. Yeah, no, this one I think Daisy can actually play like a pretty solid curse build. Uh, mm -hmm. She gets access to like all of the relevant yellow curse stuff with zero mm -hmm. to three, and then uh, tomes zero to five for this. Yeah, and then she also can pick up like a handful of like promise power, or whatever mm -hmm. purple stuff for. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have the Book of Psalms, which is a tome. Uh, you can spend a secret, heal one horror from an investigated location, and add two blessed tokens to the chaos bag. Blue tome. Blue tome. One of the few, if only. Fish book! <laughs> we have fish book. This is what we talked about. So this one you may use. Uh, you can fight with either your book or your brain. And uh, you may, when you initiate the attack, you may place one Doom on it to a maximum of three. You get plus one skill value and deal plus one damage for this attack for each Doom on Abyssal Tome. So something nice about this is that it helps you do things, which is good because you're not like only doing one thing. You can use your book, which is also good because your brain is probably when it's out, maybe two if you don't have anything else. Mm -hmm. But the other one is Moonlight Ritual works well, but also unlike other investigators who are going to build around Abyssal Tome, they probably just have like Abyssal Tome in their deck, right? You have ways that if you don't have a Moonlight Ritual, you could just play another Tome and probably get rid of it in your hand slot. So like, you can be pretty sick. Like, 
either a Dexter deck with this, where you use it as your main fighting thing, or like a Safina deck, mm -hmm. where you use Joey the Rat to throw away after. Oh yeah, yeah. This thing's like this is one of the few cards that lets you like chunk things for four damage on it. Yep. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a cool card. It's a cool card. It's a lot of damage, yeah. man, and you get plus four to the attack. Yeah, it's sick. And you're gonna use like the even just that it's two stats of your choice as well makes it so that so many other investigators can use it too. Right? Yeah, and it's level two. It's yeah. a really nice design card. Yeah. We have Sword Cane. Uh, bonk. You can bonk with your bo brain when it's good. You can evade with your brain when it's good. Yeah, just an option for that. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing is uh, to note about Hand Slots, as I said earlier, very competitive slot in Parallel Daisy. Um, just to be aware of. Uh, we have Shroud of Shadows. This is in our spell. We talk about it in greater detail in the spell video down in the description. But uh, it also allows you to evade with your brain, and has curse synergy if you are doing the curse thing, because this is from Innsmouth. As well, I didn't talk about it because there's so many cards to talk about, but for a detailed bre uh, breakdown of the Blessing Curse cards, you can find the link to the Archetype Guide down in the uh, description. Mm -hmm. And then we got Eldritch Sophist. This guy allows you to uh, move secrets around, which is good if you're doing the secret thing. And then we have mm -hmm. Ariadne's Twine, which allows you to also do the same thing, or move resources on from your pool onto it asset as a secret or move a secret into your resource pool which can be really good when you need to buy a bunch of books <laughs> that card the wording on this card always messes me up like when it gets to vice versa i'm like well i get it but i don't trust it <laughs> <laughs> i read that and i'm like why would i do that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i just want more secrets for my necronomicon <laughs> yeah. all right edge of the earth wow Daisy gets some pretty big cards from here, actually. I think that this uh, expansion was uh, very helpful for her. You got Geared Up. It's a permanent that lets you, first turn in the game, play a number of item assets from your hand, reducing their cost by one. And then you also don't take a turn. Um, but, you know, when you're playing stuff like Schaffner's Catalog, which we can talk about in a second, that is pretty sick. You just mm -hmm. dump a bunch of... And you're playing a whole bunch of assets, just dump them in the play. Yeah, and they officially have said that uh, Geared Up works like um, Ever Vigilant, where things happen one at a time, which means you can play your backpack, find a bunch of books, and start playing like them off. I don't like that one. <laughs> I don't like that one. Uh, anyway, we got our uh, Schaffner's Catalog here. This is our uh, really, really good card for Daisy, actually. Mm -hmm. It is a slotless tome. That has five secrets. You can use the secrets to pay for item assets played by investigator at your location. Uh, books tend to be items. Yep. You can pay for them. Um, has some other neat things you can do with it because it doesn't have resources on it. It has secrets. You can use those secrets to move around with Ariad's Twine mm -hmm. as actual resources or with Eldritch Sophist to something more useful. Mm -hmm. um, so we got Professor William Webb. This guy is when you successfully investigate, you can exhaust him and spend a secret. To instead gain a clue, you get to choose an item card or discard pile and add it to your hand, or discover your clue at a connecting location. This guy's really nice if you're going heavy into the Schaffner's catalog as your economy. You can help recur that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. He's got an upgrade version too, which is immediately below him. And this one lets you... Uh, get the, You get the item card always, and then you may choose to get a clue from a connecting location, but you always get the clue yeah. in some form. It's a nice upgrade. Yeah, it is a nice upgrade. We got to survey the area, which gives you foot if you need it, plus five, which is many. <laughs> seven, it is many, yeah. Seven foot is a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you just don't want to care about enemies at all, we got the Prophecy of Profana. <laughs> uh, this one gives you, as long as you're not at the Locust, you get plus one book, plus one foot, and you can ignore tax of opportunity. It's a reaction when it comes to play, you choose reveal location to be the locust. And as an action, you can move any investigator to the locust. This is very strong movement economy for you and your team. Um, gives you six book, lets you ignore enemies. Good card. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Astronomical Atlas, one of my favorite cards to come out of this expansion. I think a very important one for Daisy, Parallel Daisy. Uh, this one, it lets you, as a lightning bolt, exhaust it to look the top card of your deck. And if it's not a weakness, you can attach a face. You have to attach a face down to the Astronomical Atlas, max five cards. And as a lightning bolt, you can commit a card attached to Astronomical Atlas to an eligible skill test. If the test succeeds, you add that card to your hand instead of discarding it. Limit once per test. Um, so yeah, you can just... There's two ways you can go about this. You can use it just as a way to make your stats better um, and as card draw. 
tucking things like, for example, Prophecy Profana, and then you know, you commit your two, get your two wild, your free unexpected courage, and then get it added to your hand. Or you can play actual skills with it, uh, like deduction, and get extra uses out of them. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty handy. Um, Daisy is one of the few investigators, I think I mentioned this earlier, who can play this alongside um, the higher level, the level three uh, yellow skills. Yep. Which is a good place for her to be. We got Sleuth. Uh, this is the... Pays for Tomes. <laughs> yes, it pays for Tomes. Yeah. <laughs> Justin got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the one that pays for Tomes. Yeah. Yeah. That's... That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's... That's a... It's like, what's my purpose? You pay for Tomes. Oh, my God. Return tos. Yeah. All right. So we have the upgraded truth from fiction. Uh, so you get to place two secrets among assets uh, controlled by investigate location. Three instead if there's a clue on your location. Uh, yeah, you can split them up, too. Yeah. If you really wanted to do that. Man. Even now, if I look at this, like, uh, if you look at all these things that we just talked about, Astronomical Atlas, because it's fresh on the brain, three book, if you get it on Astronomical Atlas. That's pretty sick. That's a lot of book. That's a lot of book, yeah. We have... Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> High book. Power overwhelming. Uh, we have a call, the upgrade to Cult Lexicon, so this is a, a very uh, luxurious upgrade. It's like uh, really <laughs> So when you play your Blood Rite, you can choose to... Uh, you can change each two on it to a three... Or shuffled into your deck instead of discarding it. Which means you now can draw three cards, discard up to three, and for each card discarded, to gain a resource deal of damage. Or you could just, like, have it be as it is, and then just, like, keep putting them back into your deck. Yeah, both sides of this are very relevant, where the, the recycling one lets you use the blood rates as a resource engine and a card draw engine, because each one you play... Uh, draws other cards out of either draws you a blood rate which draws you more cards or draws the other cards out of your deck which gets you closer to your other blood rates yeah you can use it to get resources or again to like look for something and then the other side of it changing the twos to threes is very relevant because it lets you kill all the three health enemies very efficiently i also i i think like disgustingly efficiently i don't know if this is actually uh, if the original had the wording but i'm pretty sure with all these upgraded ones as well if mm -hmm. these leave play you do not lose the blood rates in your deck you lose them on the level zero versions, but not, not, not these on ones. the upgraded ones. So, like, you could just put them in your deck. <clears throat> but, I mean, like, I do think that, overall, if you're going to play a cult lexicon level three, you want it in play. <laughs> so, like, you could, but, like, don't. That's my response anytime someone brings it up, but mm -hmm. I know someone might bring it up. It's like, yeah, why, though? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good, it's much better when you can just cycle them or make them super bombs. Yeah. yeah. And then we got upgraded backpack, which has four Daisy Walker faces on it, four out of four. Uh, search to the top 12 costs one yeah takes yeah. up your buy slot I don't think we talked about no. any other cards that take up no. your buy slot for Daisy I, I feel <laughs> like the, to really push this card to the extreme though we should have been able to put four cards could you imagine oh my god why <laughs> just to push it to the extreme <laughs> This card's already card like, backpack's incredible. One of the like, I actually kind of think this card should be tabooed. Like it's so good. Yeah, even if it was like tabooed to nine, it would still be really good. Yeah, twelve is kind of nuts. It's, Anytime it's, I play a backpack and I go three, 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 I'm like, I went one too many. <laughs> well, yeah, no, you like you look at your hand and you, or I mean, you look at your deck. You generally have thirty cards, thirty three, including your specials and yeah. your uh, you draw five. Your weakness. You draw five. That's twenty eight. Twelve cards is like half your deck. That's yep. ridiculous. Yep. Yep. Naughty time. All right, I'll, I'll start with the Investigator decks because you have to talk about the deck when we get to the end. And I said, like, yeah. nothing in the Return Twos. So we got the Solano Fragments. This is a tome. A book. It's actually a tome. Wow, look at that. It's a book. It gives you book. It gives you brain. It gives you book. It's the book of books. It's the book of books. It has to be a book. <laughs> it does have to be a <laughs> it's book. It's literally the book of books. <laughs> um, it's a, We talk about it more in our, our Clue video, but also mm -hmm. just, like, this, this does a lot in Daisy. Like, if you're going to do a big hand parallel Daisy... And, like, not for the joking reasons that Travis yeah, like you're actually said. trying to. Yeah. Uh, it's a really good tool. It's yeah. also just solid. It's, like, one get plus one book. Yep. Yep. We have the Forbidden Tome. This is one that has to be researched. Uh, five secrets. It's a one-cost tome. You can exhaust it to spend a secret to draw one card. Then you have ten more cards in your hand. And there are no secrets on the Forbidden Tome. That's a big little hoop to jump through. Mm -hmm. uh, you can... Uh, you may discard it to record in your campaign log. You're just, I'm done with this book. Yeah, this card actually also has a, a pretty solid niche as a secret battery. Yep, yeah, where definitely. Where it's one resource for five secrets that you can just move around with Elder Sophist or uh, Ariad's Twine. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about it, too, is that it only costs one to do that as well. Mm -hmm. So, And also, like, Daisy gets the bonus. And then probably the only time this is going to appear, Grimm's Fairy Tales. Every... 
card gets in every, one. every card gets all, one. And that's a lie, not all of them. I don't think trench knives any of them. No, I I can't. Yeah. It's just a bad weapon. This it's red it's a red book. Yep. Uh, and after an investigator location fails a skill test by two or more, exhausted, take one and spend one secret, heal one horror from that investigator. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, one thing also, sorry, we we missed on Schaffner's. It doesn't take, take up a hand slot. I said that. Oh, did you miss it? Yeah, I said it was slotless. Cool, my mistake. Uh, but yeah, this one should be slotless. <laughs> That's what I was going to say there. I still don't I wouldn't run it. play it. I wouldn't run it. Like, this card does look a lot better for par- If I was going to play it in a deck, it'd be Parallel Daisy. Yeah. Um, it looks a lot better when it gives you plus one brain and plus one sanity as well. Mm-hmm. And you can use it to support someone who's garbi- who has garbage sanity. Yeah. yeah. Especially someone like Tony who just has trash defensive stats it's and like true. five brain. Yeah. yeah. Like it could have a niche there. Mm-hmm. 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 There's a reason it's here. Uh, we have Encyclopedia level zero. Uh, yeah. Spend five secret. As five secrets, you can do the mm-hmm. thing that the original one does. It's actually almost as good as the original. Yeah. Yeah. Probably... Like, there's a case to be made that this is better because it doesn't cost you experience, and how often are you going to be using this more than five times in a campaign, especially when you're, like, maybe if you're playing normal Daisy. Yes, normal Daisy, You use yeah. it every turn, Yeah. but... With Parallel you're... Daisy, yeah. This yeah. one's probably fine. Yeah. Oh, we have Safeguard. This allows you to move with other people. Notably, uh, level zero, they move before you, mm-hmm. just to be aware of. Yeah, these movement cards are especially important for Parallel Daisy because you need to spend so many actions, like, digging for your cards and actually playing assets that you need to make up those actions somewhere yeah. else. What's really sick, though, is that the downside that I said normally applies it applies to Guardians. With Daisy, you move with your Guardian, they take the enemy, and you're just like, hey. I've done it. That actually is kind of sick. That's kind of That's funny. That's pretty good, yeah. yeah. Uh, we have Arcane Enlightenment. Your maximum hand size increased by one. You have one additional hand slot, which can only be used to hold a Tome asset. All right, now we're talking. It does cost two, so you have to factor that into your economy. But, like, let's make our book seven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Extra tome asset. Yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, level zero, feed the mind. It's three secrets, and uh, it's a test book one. For each point you succeed by to a maximum of three, draw a card. You gave one of these to me. When we played that thing, it was a gift. I never played it. No, I played it. I never used it. Yeah. I also gave one to someone else. Perfect. For this almost the same deal. I think they gave me one more resource. But so they also sick. gave me a bonus <laughs> <laughs> so sick oh uh, yeah if you want card draw this is an option uh we have winning green she's gonna be really good here so she does cost four notable but when you control a tome or a relic asset you get plus one book after you reveal a location or put a new location to play exhaust winning green search the top six cards of your deck for a tome or a relic asset and draw it this is good because you're mm-hmm. probably going to be revealing new locations and you're going to turn those into tomes which is good yes yeah all right, Travis, why don't you take these ones? Okay, I've got Burn the Midnight Oil. This lets you investigate and get two resources. It's economy, yay. Uh, cryptic Writings, get two resources. This is economy. Yay. But also, after you draw it, you get to play it for free. Yep. Which is uh, a lot of the cards that let you search your your deck. Like, uh, no stone turn state to draw the card. Pretty handy. Yep. Guard level two, Esoteric Atlas. This one lets you move up to three locations away instead of two. That's actually a big noticeable thing. Up to three is a lot better than exactly two. Yeah. 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 We got our upgrade Forbidden Tomes. These, you have to jump through the hoops. It was previously discussed for. And their actions are four actions. Oh, my God. Um, And then you you exhaust them. You spend one less action on it for each four cards in your hand to a minimum of one action. Um, Man, they really should have just... Made a new rule that it could have been zero. Take an action for zero. Man, that would have been yeah. that would have been a rules been nightmare. <laughs> uh, one of them lets you move a damage from a player card at your location to an enemy at your location, um, and then the other one lets you move to a connecting location. May move to a connecting location and then discover a clue. Both of them are like very strong effects, but they are very difficult to make work. Yep. We got our upgrade Witten Green. She gives you plus one brain and plus one book, and then she looks at nine cards instead of six, and she has plus one sanity. All good things. Yeah. We got upgrade Cryptic Writings gives you uh, three resources instead of two, so it's a free emergency cash. And if you have ten more cards and other cards in your hand, you get four resources instead. Also very solid. And then we got the Necronomicon Petrus de Dacia translation. Uh, this one. It's for five books. Oh, that's as many as you have to start with. It's doubled you. Yeah. 
comes with six uses. You can only play one copy of the Necronomicon per deck, which isn't... A downside, really. It is a downside, but it's not, like... It yeah. doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there's Lightning Bolt. You can spend one secret to get plus two skill value for this skill test. You can spend two secrets to draw two cards. You can spend three secrets to discover a clue at any location. Or you can spend four secrets to deal three damage to an enemy investigating you. Uh, worth noting, these are Lightning Bolts. You can do them as many times as you like per turn. The Necronomicon does not exhaust to use them. Um... <laughs> Pretty good. It's pretty good. The only thing it's missing is movement. Then it would cover like pretty much every uh, other class. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> well, we have spend five clues to just or five secrets to move to any location. Any, any revealed location. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Fantasy flight games are cowards. <laughs> I see. Yeah, you guys got a little bit of space at the bottom yeah. there. You guys, we can we can put a bit more text yeah. on this. Yeah. 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 Good card. Uh, if you can't tell, what's well, a good card. Uh, last two things we got here is we got the upgraded I've Got a Plan. This uh, two cost fight uses book instead of fist. You get plus two book for this test, deal plus one damage for each clue you had to a max of plus three. If you're doing combat daisy, this is a nice choice. That plus two book is actually very helpful for getting over a lot of humps that you may face because <laughs> generally the enemies that you're going to want to spend this on are harder than like the shroud locations you're going to be dealing yeah, with. Yeah, they're pretty big. Uh, then we have Mind Over Matter. Uh, fast play during only during your turn until the end of turn. Add your book to your fist and your foot. Draw a card. This card's fantastic. I honestly, when when I was building this, I didn't even. I've, my mind completely blanked that there was an upgraded Mind Over Matter. And I saw this and I was like, "Wow, this card's really good. <laughs> That's a really good card." <laughs> like, yeah. It is especially for like some other for some of the off field investigators like Trish. Yeah, yeah. Like we're it's it's one that's like we're not commonly gonna like probably see at our table like maybe like someone's gonna do it just to say they've done it but like in solo oh my god that card's like just mm -hmm. good all right the deck yeah so we got uh some tomes we got encyclopedia we got our forbidden tomes a cult lexicon old book of lore and a scroll of prophecies um ideally these are going to become better different tomes over the course mm -hmm. of the campaign we got two Arcane Enlightenments to help us. They're basically extra copies of the Toad Bag. Um, we got a Hollowed Mirror as our one of blue card. Two Tetsuo Moris and two Del Two Deeps filling the rest of them. Uh, Tetsuo again helps you find the things you need, and which is really big. And Del Two Deep helps you get experience to get better tones faster. Mm -hmm. We got our backpacks to find things. We have Research Librarian to find things. We got wit and green to find things, <laughs> and also give us plus one book. Yeah. Um, you'll notice that wit and green is the ally you want to have him play. The other Tetsuo Mori and Research Librarian are completely expendable. You throw them away at the first opportunity you can. Yeah. Uh, we got our styling revelations, which man, we have a billion ways <laughs> to search <laughs> our, our deck. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you're gonna want to keep these in the deck for resources to play your cards later, as well as to put secrets on your powerful tomes that you're gonna upgrade into. We got our cracked cases and our cryptic writings. These give us money to play things. Wow. And our truth from fiction to put secrets on our tomes. It's a pre Daisy's got pre one track thing going on. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> and then the only skills we got here are deduction because like these actually I could see taking out at some point later, but for the first couple scenarios you, you need that kind that action compression yeah. to get through the scenarios and get a meaningful amount of experience. Yeah. So yeah. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm curious to try Parallel Daisy, at least just once to say I've done it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think there's a cool options. Uh, I've heard big things about the geared up Daisy. I think like the, uh, the, using, uh, Professor Webb to cycle the, uh, Schaffners seems like a pretty good plan for it. So there's different ways you can take her. I think she definitely improved with Edge of the Earth and hopefully she mm -hmm. gets some more stuff in, uh. Yeah, I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure I made this deck before Edge of the Earth looking mm -hmm. at it. I think I probably... Now I'd probably include the Schaffners over yeah. like the Forbidden Tomes maybe. Mm -hmm. But, eh. Yeah. It's just, it's just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. That's all these are. Huge thank you to everyone for watching this video. Next week we're going to be talking about Safina Rousseau. So that's going to be fun. We're going to have Bryn for that one because Bryn likes Green... Did you know that? Bryn likes Green Investigators? I'm playing a Safina deck today. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I'm playing Zoe. What, First time. Do you know what Bryn's playing? No. 
So sick. He asked me what I was playing last night, and I said, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to play Bob Jank. He's going to come with a Bob Jank. That's what he told us, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.